is Jason from Overhype Studios and today we have another Let's Play series for you. And we will be playing the, um, the build that uh, will be released in the early access version. Pretty much there are some minor bug fixes and so on, but we won't add any major features for the early access. So if you are thinking about getting the early access, then uh, watch this series and you'll have a pretty good idea about what to expect in the game and what will you get for your money. So um, yeah, let's uh, hit up a new campaign and um, I won't be uh, explaining all the new features and the new content because uh, that will be uh, too much. We have put so much stuff into the game since the last Let's Play so let's just uh, jump into the thing and I explain a little as, I, as we go along. Okay, so first thing um, we have uh, a new campaign button a screen where you can choose your, your banner for your mercenary company. I think I go with the um, with this one, and you of can of course change the name. We be the Red Hogs, because we all know hogs are very dangerous. So uh, especially red ones. Um, we have a difficulty setting. Uh, the difficulty setting will affect the resources you have available. So um, it's not affecting the AI or the um, hit points of characters or something. But um, if if we change the um, uh, the economic aspect of the game around that gives you s such a big benefit or um, if you can get more brothers, a better equipment and so on. Now we have a little intro screen where I won't uh, read through it, you can do that yourself. And um, we have our early access disclaimer, so um, this will be there for the early access as well. It just says that there will be bugs, there will be features missing or incomplete, the UI doesn't have a skin yet. So for all of you that, uh, who think that the uh, UI will stay, stay this black, it's just a placeholder for now. And um, the balancing is, is, is very tricky with our game, but I think we have, we have come a pretty far away. So um, yeah, let's jump into the game, who's that? Okay, here, let's pause the game for a second. Um, here's our our band of battle brothers. We're gonna start out with uh, three random brothers. Okay, let's have a look. Uh, there's Olafur, he's a mason. Yeah, it's a mason. Oh, this doesn't look too good. He's club footed. And he's a founding member. Yeah, there you can see with a little bro fist. Uh, the founding members, these three, they will get um, bonuses, but if they die, of course, they are lost. Farmhand is always a very good uh, background. So uh, he gets the hit points and fatigue. Founding member, okay, nice guy, Dietrich and Adelma. He looks like a, a uh, lumberjack, yes, and he is, okay, he's a lumberjack. He's determined, so he has a, he starts combat with increased morale. He's a, of course, he's a founding member and he's a cocky. That's not too helpful. I mean, it, it, it increases his bravery, but it decreases his defense value, so he's like, negative defense not very helpful if you have a big big axe and no shield but his bravery is off the charts so um, when we take a look at the perks um, that they can choose on level up there are some perks that are based on bravery and increase the performance of the whole um, mercenary company i think uh, adema is predetermined for that if he survives that long actually so let's head into town and do our first um First equipment run. Okay, um, let's get some more battle brothers, some more red hawks in this case. Okay, what do we have here? Yeah, I'm a red catcher, refugee. Edmund is a farmhand. I really like farmhands, so let's get that guy. Ragnha, he's a brawler. Yeah, we need a brawler on the team. Um, as you can see, I these these all all the all these uh, mercenaries are very cheap. This one is actually the most expensive. There are some mercenaries that will cost up to 1,000 crowns or even more, depending on their background and their equipment. Let's get around seven, so two more. I like a dedicated archer, so uh, we get Ragnha on the team. He's a poacher. Okay, he's not, he's not, not exactly man of the law. And look at this guy, Erhard the Cultist, and. Uh, he has some scars on his arm that just say some really weird gibberish. I'm not really sure if I want him, but I mean, he, 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 he's a bit menacing, right? But yeah, that's what we need. Okay, let's get another guy. Let's get eight. Okay, what is Swine? He's a grave robber. Yeah, he's not afraid of the dead, so we need you on the team. 
Okay, eight guys should be good. We hardly have any weapons in our stash, so let's get a lot of cheap weapons. Let's get some clubs. Um, yeah, this this Zax is always very handy to have. I, I still have a lot of money, so I get a spear. It's an awesome weapon at the beginning. I, I grab all the shields that I can get. Those are the real lifesavers. Let's get one or two armors. And um, we changed the name of the armor parts. So um, that used to be armor parts, the tools and supplies, but now you can also uh, repair weapons. We introduced weapon durability. You can see it this with the small icon, the 24 points. And weapons will get damaged and can break in combat. And um, tools and supplies are now also used to repair weapons. So preemptively get, we should get some of those. Double our supply of them. Uh, okay, so we've got 250 left. That's, that's not very much. Let's go ahead and equip our guys. Um, I usually give the best equipment to my three founding brothers because uh, this founding member perk is really strong and you, you, you usually don't want to lose, lose those guys. Okay, let's have a quick look at the skills and the, of the other guys. Okay, it's a farmhand. He's bloodthirsty. All kills are fatalities. Okay, so this guy is definitely getting a sword because then he will chop off the heads. Other weapons have fatalities as well, but um, this is really helpful against the zombies because when you chop off the head, they won't revive. Everybody knows that. Okay, here's the brawler, uh, Ragnar. Um, yeah, he looks decent, he's eagle-eyed. eagle, eagle -eyed. So, uh, Big vision and determined. This guy really means business. Nice one, his, his skill is pretty low though. Okay, the poacher. It's just it's the same name. And then we have the cultist. He's irrational. I mean, that's very fitting. Asthmatic. Oh, that's not very good. It means reduced um, fatigue generation. His, his, his range skill is pretty high, so maybe I get him a bow. And then we have, wow, the grave robber, Swine. He's tiny. Not very helpful. Minus damage. He's quick. And yeah, he, he's like a dedicated ranged guy as well. Okay, let's let's dump some equipment on these guys. He definitely he has very low defense and no shield, so he should definitely use that um, uh, that armor that I have. Okay, you guys, you get a bludgeon. And you too. Um, the spear gives a little bonus to, to your offense, to your to hit chance, so I will give one of the guys with a very low... This guy, he gets a spear. Okay, we have um, one more shield. I just dump some equipment on these guys and then we will see uh, in a baptism uh, of fire, we will see who will turn out, uh, who will survive the fight. <laughs> okay, um, this looks good. Let's get one bow, one more bow on the team. Yeah, I can only afford the short bow and some arrows. We reduced the amount of arrows in one quiver, so now you have to really keep an eye on it, on your, your ammunition during the fight. I think the cultist has like this really, uh, he has a, like a scar on his forehead. Um, anyways, okay, who wanted to the other bow? Okay, swine, that's good for you. Let's keep the club in the backpack. Um, with our new weapon durability system, you have to keep in mind that weapons can break during combat and they actually will do that. So um, I'm gonna equip some of the guys with extra weapons. I don't have any more extra weapons, so... Here we go. Okay, and then we have a look at our first assignment. This is our first uh, mercenary contract. Um, I, w I won't read this out uh, loud. Is it the same in the, in the last Let's Play? And um, in this text you will get a little context about the world and uh, what you're supposed to do. And he will give you some hints on, on what I just did. Uh, that you should get some human, get some equipment and so on. I'll just skip that for now to make this last not so long. And he gives us the um, contract to um, uh, raise the bandit hideout that is right next to the city. So we head over and um, yeah, uh, fulfill our first contract and see who, who survives the, the baptism of fire.
Okay, so they have a marksman and a couple of thugs. Did I get, forget to give him the arrows? Okay, I'm really stupid. Sorry for that. Uh, anyway, anyways, we we can we can hack, no problem. I'm just gonna move forward and wait. Uh, waiting uh, means that the guy um, moves to the end of the line and has of the of the turn order and has a a move at the end of combat. <laughs> That's what you get for hitting for forgetting your 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 arrows. Uh, need some arrows, dude? <laughs> yeah, I have some arrows. Okay. Um, so this marksman is a really nice guy helping us out with the arrows, shooting some over over to us. Let's move up Ragnar and um, return fire. Not like that. Okay, move up a little, see what they're doing and then I can take the rest of the move. Always protect the archer. If the archer gets pinned in close combat then he will um, uh, not be able to use his ranged weapon anymore. And that's what I'm aiming for. Just move a little bit. Oh, he acted. He already acted. So I'm gonna try and pin this marksman with um, Ragnar. Just move up the middle and wait. I hope they don't intercept him because that, that's what I would do. And on the no, luckily not. So he leaves his. Um... Oh, he did. <laughs> okay, never mind. Um... He stopped my guy Ragnar from uh, getting close to the archer, which uh, it's uh, the best move that he could actually do. Okay, now I can move up and preparing f prepare the next turn. Or maybe I'll just send um, the cultist around the back to, to try and get this bandit in close combat. Okay, let's knock him on the head. I choose the, um, the clubs have uh, just like a normal attack, a bash that does extra fatigue damage and a knockout skill that will, uh, if, it, if it hits, it does a little damage, but it knocks out the other guy for his next turn. So if we hit that, that would be absolutely smashing. <laughs> Just, it would be really smashing. Okay, Adama attacking with a two-handed weapon costs a lot of action points, so no more move. And let's try to knock out this guy. He's overwhelmed now because for every consecutive attack, on the, on, on the character you get in a turn, you get an increased chance to hit. Um, and that's that we simulate um, overwhelming somebody. So uh, he's out of business now. And that means that his zone of control doesn't n not longer, longer apply, I think. So I should be able to move through here. Yes, I do. So now we can really get close to that archer. Okay, first move. If I hit this guy, he's he's completely will be completely wasted. This this axe does massive damage. Okay, but just fifty seven percent to hit. Uh, unfortunately, a miss. Okay, let's see. You stay down here and try to knock that guy out. Maybe knock this guy with the um uh, with the knockback skill. We can knock this guy out of the way and get to the archer. Just like this, and then move in. So shields are very versatile. They not only increase greatly increase your defense, but they also have utility. You can raise it to increase your defense even more, and you can knock a guy uh, out of the way or knock him from from a from height levels or whatever. It's really handy to have. Now he has to get his melee weapon out and swing wildly. Okay, let's shoot. When I try to shoot these guys, there my my own guys are in the way, so I'm not doing that. Nice hit. Okay, what are you doing? Uh, nice, it was a good idea to give the, um, the sturdy armor to Adama. So, hit him on the head. Oh, come on. Ragnar is not in very good shape to get rid of these guys. Okay, well done. And stun this guy. Well done. Great stuff. Hmm. Swine, he, he will be one, hit, one shot with pretty much any attack that he receives. I shouldn't get him in a close combat, but whatever. Okay, move in and help. Oh, oh, oh. That doesn't look too good. Seven health points left. He's he's dead. If he can get his shield up when it's his turn. I think he's it's his turn before these guys, so he's, he's okay. You can see this, this little blue flag means increased morale. 
Yeah, you can see it confident. It gives an, an attack bonus. <coughs> well done. And the white flag is the opposite. Uh, yeah, those guys will turn tail any second now. Okay, now another chance to swing that axe. Wow, that's nasty. Just cutting through that guy uh, as if through a a log of wood. That's what he's that what he's best at. Okay, we can. This guy will flee next turn, so an, any character next to him when he starts moving will get a free attack. Okay, Ragnar, now you see you've got seven health points. Get your shield up and stab someone. Well done. One hit and he's gone. He, he will probably not survive this. Yeah, knock him down. Just like that. Maybe we should present other variable targets to them. Like swine. And he has to kill that guy. He didn't... It doesn't look too good for, for Ragnar. Maybe shoot an arrow into the melee. That's always pretty dangerous yeah but we did it we can hit our own guys so that's really risky move to make there please don't kill him Oof, that was pretty close i think i gonna we gonna name him ragnar the lucky if he survives this of course now finish it no you should definitely get the shield wall up no risks and yeah, he's pretty much done there's not not a lot you can do right now to, ev to evade his fate. And there's even the guy with the big axe, splitting heads. I won't shoot here because <laughs> now the um, it's very very likely that I hit my own guys. Come on. Wow, that was pretty close. Now finish it. Well done, well done. Okay, this is definitely Ragnar the Lucky. Um, let's look at the combat performance. Um, Olafur Bricklayer, he did very well. He killed two guys, um, did a total of 88 uh, damage. You can see the damage done, the damage taken, 84 damage. That's a lot of damage. Um, and the experience. So Olafur, of course, got a lot of experience, but Aduma did pretty well as well. And, and Ragnar, the bow, the bow guy, he did too, did well too. Okay, here we can see a new feature that we have implemented. Um, you can see now the durability of uh, all the items that you're looting and you have to repair them with your tools and supplies. And damaged items will give you less um, value in uh, uh, on the market. So if, you, if you're trying to sell this, it will go, give you only like 25% of the, of the original price. Okay, let's wrap it up. Nice, well done. Okay, so here's the um, the confirmation that we um, we managed to fulfill the contract and we get some coin for it. So now we can think about what we're going to do next. Um, first, we can check um, our our items and our characters. I think yeah, this guy is pretty beat up. His armor is damaged. All the items that are on the character will be repaired automatically. And for all the other items, you can um, press Alt and, and then right-click them to switch repairs on and off. But as we only have like very few weapons, uh, we will repair all that stuff. And now you can see um, that uh, all repairing all that equipment will take us uh, 7 hours and require 14 tools and supplies. And same for the medical, oh, 8 hours. That would take a long time to get healed. Okay, let's head to town and um, distribute some of the of the items. I'm really confused right now because nobody died in the first con in the first combat, and that's very unusual. So um, first of all, give this guy his uh, his quiver of arrows. He must be really mad at me. What an incompetent commander! Get that hood on. Short sword, it's a bit better than the and then this sucks. What else do we have? Like maybe hand out some secondary weapons. And I really like the club on the on the on the bow guys, on the range guys, because when if they get in, in close combat, which you you usually really want to avoid, um, they they can stun the opponent and then get out of the zone of control. So that's that's pretty neat. Okay, well done. 
Let's uh, take a look at another um, contract. Escorting, escorting a caravan, that's always good money. Wow, that's uh, over, gives over 1000 crowns. But um, usually this is a pretty long distance and that can take, take some time and I'm pretty rested and I want to fight. Okay, Ironshaw Invaders Camp, we have to find that. Um, it's a long way in the forest northwest of here. No, we don't want to go to the forest. Let's just head out and, and, and uh, um, try our luck around um, around here. Usually uh, you can find, if you wander out in the wild, you can find um, locations that um, you can raid. Like this, a collapsed temple ruins. Um, oh, there are orcs there. I have... It says in, in the description. I have a, a pro tip for you. Oh, there are some bandit hunter hunters. Um, do not engage orcs when you are on level one. Just don't. So there, tip. I just saved your bacon right there. I tried to get these raiders. Okay, these are marksmen. Uh, that can be quite tricky because they are really accurate and very dangerous um, in the ranged combat. So um, I have to make use um, of our shield and I have to get on the higher eleva elevation. Oh, hi. Uh, this, is, this is nasty. Edmund is going to try to soak up all the shots. And I have to spread out a little so that they don't, don't, won't do as much um, random hits if they miss. Okay, let's fly. Okay, he will. Uh, the cultist will stick behind him because he has a shield. It's just it's just a small buckler, but it it just gives a little bit of range defense. Oh, that was not very smart of me. Okay, big shield guy, move up. Dietrich, you go up here. I hope I can scare them away so that they uh, spend all the action points moving and not shooting. Oh, this is this is tough. This guy doesn't have a shield. Just get up right in their face, and then hope that they um, that they don't hit me. Okay, just move here. Okay, now it's now my it's my turn to shoot forty percent. That percent that's pretty decent. Well done. Can I get to any of these? No, I can't. That's not so good. I should maybe wait so that the distance is a bit longer uh, between between them and then move up uh, after they have fired the arrows. Or I will present like a really tempting target over here and get the shield wall up. And it greatly increases this range defense. <coughs> oh yeah, you can see it work right there. What are you doing? Okay, just wait. This looks good. Okay, I can definitely pin the first guy. And maybe even the second. <coughs> well done. Okay, don't die. Oh, he has only 17 hit points. That's not too good. Okay, so I have to move around the zone of control of this guy. Just to make sure that he doesn't pin my, my other fighter. Okay. Don't shoot. Just move up. <laughs> don't get killed in close combat. That would be just a really big shame. Maybe you can hide behind this one. And you too. Just like that. Okay, nice one. And now jump out of your hiding place and ambush the guy. Uh, through um, waiting a turn, I uh, managed to to actually get like a double move in on them. And that's that's pretty handy. Well done, nice shot. That was pretty risky. Okay, hide, hide behind this guy. Don't get shot in the face. 
Oh, here's an axe. That's that's pretty nasty. Only twenty percent. Come on. Wow, this is tricky. This is really tricky. Let's get it up here. Twenty percent. Okay. Ah, nice one. You hit him. All out attacks. Once you get them. Oh. Oh, 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 that was nasty. That was just one arrow. Uh, and the other guys are down there in the brushes. I have the feeling that I'm gonna pay a high price for this fight. Maybe you can scare them off a little. Okay, you need to finish this guy really fast. I said finish him fast. Okay. Move up and shoot. Shoot and scoot. <laughs> now they are already getting killed in close combat. This is this is too crazy. I can pin them both. That would be actually awesome. Hope I hope the Adama doesn't get killed in close combat. Oh well, this doesn't look too good. Okay, Ragnar. Now he can hit his own guy, that would be too bad. Gonna move around the side and then shoot from the side. Like so. You really have to get that guy. Oh, come on. Get that shield wall up. And you move on the, on the high elevated ground and then hit this guy on the head. Or not. This doesn't look too good. Aruma is pretty done. Okay, I kill this guy. Well done, that was pretty good. Yeah, you, you know, time for some close combat archery. That was not good. That was not good at all. Move over here. Goodbye, Aruma. <laughs> oh, you managed to grab the last hit with his head. Okay. Maybe I have a chance after all. 42%? Let's wait. Let's wait until... Um, what was his name? Dietrich? Can do can get a hit in and then I get an overwhelm bonus. Okay, wh which shrubbery was this guy in? I don't know. Here? Was he here? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Let's hit this guy on the head. Well done. And another one. There you go. And now finish him. Or finish him. Or not. Come on, Adrima. That was your chance. Okay, now move around the side and try to shoot this guy. Ah, he did. Oh, he, he moved over here. He's, he's, he's like one really quick guy. Okay, shoot. Come on. Okay. That was like so unlucky. That was almost crazy. Chase this guy around. I lost two really good guys already. I don't want to lose any more guys. Oh, come on, that was that was really close. Uh, move over here and pin him. I mean, or maybe already stab him, stab the guy. Okay, you move down and help your comrades. Like so. Okay, shooty time. Well, well done, finally somebody is hitting a shot. I think they won't make it down there in time, but anyways. Maybe I should knock this guy down. Just stab. <laughs> oh, that was nasty. Oh, I'm losing men left and right. I shouldn't have I shouldn't have engaged the, the hunters, the marksmen. They're pretty they're pretty tough to deal with. They are all armed with a hunting bows and they do a lot of damage and they're really accurate and I didn't have enough shields to deal with them. So that was a really ballsy move. Um Come on, uh, he's, he's almost in the corner of the map. 
that was a, like a really ballsy move to to engage those guys. Um, but it will pay out. It will pay off. I will get a couple of hunting bows and uh, that I can use, uh, sell, and um, yeah. But no, no, no. It didn't really pay off. But we will get some promotions out of this fight, which is always very good. Well done, nice shot in the end. Okay, we lost Adema, that was one of our initial uh, battle brothers. That's a really shame. We, we lost uh, Ragnar, the, um, not the bow Ragnar. So right now we don't have any more confusions going on. And we lo um, lost Olaf, so like our two strongest guys, both founding members. Let's just quickly carry on because that's like really, really embarrassing. Right now I thought, oh nice, we found a great axe, but actually that's the axe from um, Adema. And here are some hunting bows. They do a lot more damage than the, um, than the uh, regular short bow. And they have a, a longer range. And they are overall like really valuable and really awesome. Let's get all that stuff. Did we get any promotions? Yeah. All of our guys got promoted, so now it's time to dish out some perks. And uh, lick our wounds. That was a pretty nasty combat. Okay, let's go through our promotions over here. Uh, we, uh, by the way, added a sort button, so now you can sort your stash. Just wanted to mention that really quick. First of all, let's uh, give out the hunting bows. Awesome, great stuff. Although they will do a lot more damage. Get bigger shields for all our guys that are left. And um, yeah, that armor has like some, uh, some holes in it and a lot of blood stains, but <laughs> never mind that. Um, dish out some, some armor. And have a look at the perks and they do the level ups. So Dietrich, he's like the last of our, um, of our founding members. And I want to increase, um, when on level up you can increase uh, three stats of these. And um, those are um, increased by a random amount between like three and five points. So you, you can be lucky or unlucky with those. Anyways, I want to increase his hit points. He has a pretty high hit point count. And in a second you will see why I do that. And his fatigue, his fatigue is really crucial because as it, the armor gets heavier, and um, more fatigue is always very useful um, because if, if you run out of fatigue or if you accumulate um, too much fatigue during combat, uh, you won't be able to perform any actions, um, even if you have enough action points. Okay, what are we going for? Now we have the offense tree, the de defense tree and the utility tree. What we'll be doing is a, giving this guy a defense uh, perk that's called Colossus. And it will increase his hit points by 25%. And that's with his farm hand, he gets 10, point, 10 hit points. Uh, then I just increase the hit points to 65, and now I will increase them by another 25%, bringing him up to 80, 81 hit points. And that's pretty massive. That's pretty baller. Okay, then we have Edmund. He's a farm hand as well. Um, I think I'll do the same for him. Usually I don't like doing the same, but it will pay off because it will increase greatly increase his survivability giving that extra 20 hit points and uh, as i keep increasing hit points with his level ups um the bonus will increase as well okay ragnar the archer you have of you have like a crazy low range skill for an archer you have to increase that and what else maybe the range defense and that was unlucky it's just two and morale is okay-ish let's give you some more fatigue that's not always good okay with the archers we're going for the offense tree um, we have sundering strikes that's pretty decent plus 20 percent um, effectiveness against armor but i'm going for fast adaption and that after you missed um, a shot or, or is um, uh, an attack you will get a plus 15 percent chance to hit and uh, that's very good for for um, two-handed weapons or for bows because if you miss then the next turn you will probably hit your target for swine we're actually going to do the same thing increase his range skill like so um, his fatigue and maybe his range defense and let's go for another one 
maybe thundering strikes because that does a 20 20 percent plus damage against armor is pretty decent and now we have the crazy cultist okay what what will you give you he has a high very high range um melee skill that's pretty pretty awesome let's give you some more fatigue you will need that as soon as he gets a heavier armor and um, also increase your hit points or maybe a melee defense that that's that's decent making him harder to get hit in close combat and i will want to increase um what does he have uh, okay what are you going for defense or utility we, we don't have anyone for the utility tree yet but actually i don't want to go there with him so what we're gonna do is maybe make him an offensive guy push the advantage is pretty good um, but I am going with executioner it um, increases the damage by 20% against targets that are below 50% so that's a very good finisher okay there we go um, unfortunately this is the end of our first episode and um, I'm gonna try to keep them around half an hour long so we are a bit over the time now uh, anyways, I will continue this in uh, more episodes and um, we will uh, announce an early access release date pretty soon. So make sure to um, subscribe to YouTube and uh, have a look at our blog. Uh, the link is in the description and follow our updates and yeah, give us a comment or a like or whatever and uh, see you in the next episode.